Hi, this is the circuit we're going to be using to do our test. We've got a power supply and the test is all about finding the output impedance or if you like the internal resistance of the power supply. To do that we're going to use a MOSFET transistor as a variable resistor in our circuit to draw current from the power supply. Now bench power supplies have a very low output impedance or internal resistance so we're going to need to draw a significant amount of current from the power supply in order to be able to get anywhere close to testing its output impedance. This type of MOSFET transistor can in theory conduct between 20 and 30 amps but if you're going to get it to do that you need to mount it on a heat sink and that's what I've done in the circuit you'll see we put it on a heat sink and that heat sink is immersed in water but not the MOSFET transistor. To get the MOSFET transistor to switch on, we effectively need to fulfill three conditions. One condition is that the source connection is connected to the ground or negative of the power supply. The drain connection, the middle connection, must be connected to the power supply positive. And the third condition is that we, for this particular type of MOSFET, we have a positive voltage between the gate and the source. Now, all MOSFETs are different. This one, as we will see, requires a positive voltage of about 3.5 volts in order to get it to conduct. But once you get to 3.5 volts, it conducts an awful lot of current. And that's what we need in order to be able to test the power supply. So that we've got some control over the MOSFET current, we're going to use a decade box, a resistor box, to adjust, gently adjust the voltage between the gate and source of the MOSFET. Doing this allows us to gradually increase the current and therefore see the step change in the output voltage when it occurs. And once we see that step change, we're able then to take the change in voltage, the change in current, and thus calculate the output impedance of the power supply. There is, however, one last thing to note. This power supply has an extremely low internal resistance, along with all well-designed electronic power supplies. And it may be that you would need to do a range of tests under different conditions to exactly specify what the internal resistance is. But one thing you can be sure of, the internal resistance and output impedance of a power supply is far superior to that of a battery. Hey there, so we're ready to do our test. What I'm going to do is switch the power supply on. You will see the power supply set up to about 5 volts and it's drawing no current to start with. At that point, I'm going to start ranging down my decade box. And what we'll see is the voltage across the gate source connection of the MOSFET begin to rise. When that voltage reaches a certain tipping point, somewhere around about 3.5 volts, we're going to see current being drawn from the power supply. There should though be no change in the voltage initially until we reach a point where the current draw is so large the internal resistance or the output impedance of the power supply begins to take effect and we will see a small step change in the voltage at that point. And when we see that step change the current and the step change taken together can be used to calculate the output impedance of this power supply. So let's go, switch the power supply on. So we're going to start ranging down our decade box here. Oops. And what we're looking for is a step change in the voltage. And when we get that step change, what I'm talking about by a step change, I mean a change of say 30 or 40 millivolts. You'll see it when it happens. We're going to measure the current, the change in current. At the moment, the current is zero. Because I've done this test before, I'm going to range the resistance box down very quickly. But if you were doing a test where you weren't sure about the, the voltage required or the resistance required, you would normally start with all the dials fully clockwise and then range down accordingly. But I know in this, in this case, we don't need an awful lot of uh, resistance to produce the switch on voltage for the MOSFET. Let's quickly range down the mega ohm. When we get to the bottom of that, we should just see a change here. And we go on to the 100k, once again, a change, and the 10k all the way down. And by the time we get to the bottom of the 10k range, we're at about 3.14 volts, but we know that we're still not drawing any current. 
Now we're going to start to range down the 1K. There we are, 1K, 3.36, 3.61. And at that point, we start to draw some current. So here, we've got 30 milliamps of current being drawn by the circuit. And I'm going to range just one more on the 1K, and we're drawing 300 milliamps now, but still no change in the voltage. We start to move down the 100 ohm range quite swiftly. We're at half an amp, 700 milliamps, 800 milliamps, and one amp, still no change. So that's what we're looking for, a change in the output voltage. We go all the way clockwise with the 100 ohm one again, range the 1K down one further, and then begin to notch down the 100 again. And we see the current rising, 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 and there's the step change, okay? We've got a step change now of about 50 millivolts, that's from 5.01 volts to 4.96 volts, and a change in current of 3.27 amps. So 50 millivolts, 3.27 amps, that can be used to work out the output impedance of this power supply.